All right, and we are live. So welcome back to Dap University. So today we've got a lot to talk about in our live stream. We're gonna talk about the insane crypto meltdown that has happened and one crypto in particular that has completely melted down that has likely you know, been a pretty big factor in why we've seen cryptos like Bitcoin it get just dragged down to new lows uh, beyond other cryptos, okay? We're talking about the uh, whole incident that's happening with the Terra UST stablecoin. I don't know if you've all been following this on uh, other social media platforms like Twitter, but it's been absolutely insane thing to watch. I've I've never seen anything like this in crypto before. So I'm going to talk about it in this video today, what you need to know, because this is having an impact on the crypto markets. Uh, we're going to look at a lot of the updates that have happened in this space since yesterday. <laughs> it's absolutely, it's literally one of the craziest days I've ever seen in crypto. And I've been watching this space day in, day out for the better part of about five years. <laughs> okay, so you don't want to miss this. Uh, we're going to some your questions and a whole lot more. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to know how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so we got people jumping in the chat here. We got Culture Hives, Automatic Beats, David Stone, Code Chap, uh, Alden. Uh, let's see here, Adam, uh, Grig, hope I'm saying that right, or Grig, uh, Gerardo, welcome, 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 Ugandan crypto guru. So let's jump into this. All right, let's talk about this crazy crypto meltdown that's happening, uh, particularly with the Terra stablecoin, uh, UST, and how that's impacting the overall crypto markets as well. So first and foremost, uh, you know, we're going to talk about crypto prices in, in general. Of course, we, yesterday was a pretty brutal red day for crypto. I'm not trying to make light of any of that. Trust me, I'm feeling the pain uh, just as much as anybody else watching this stream. Uh, but part of the thing I want to look at is how crazy yesterday was and just like, Try to put the prices aside for a minute, and almost like you're watching a, a TV show where something insane happens, and it's like strangely exciting. Uh, and that's what I want to focus on right now. So basically, let's talk about the Terra stablecoin because basically this thing got absolutely, let's see here, absolutely nuked. Um, it went down to like below 70 cents in a really short amount of time. Everybody's freaking out about this. We've seen some recovery. So let's let's get into the details of exactly what happened. So what is uh what is UST in the first place and why does it even matter? So basically UST is a stable coin. It's a it's a cryptocurrency whose price is not supposed to change. It's supposed to be pegged to the US dollar. Okay. So you know just like any other stable coin, USDC, uh USD uh, D DT. I think I'm even saying that second. Ago. UST is Terra stablecoin. USDT is Tether. Okay. So uh, basically, the whole idea is you can be in crypto. You can have a crypto that doesn't have any volatility to do stablecoin yield farming, whatever you want to do. Just hold hold stable value, and it's an algorithmic stablecoin. So uh, we have it runs on the Terra ecosystem. Okay. Um, so this is not the first algorithmic stablecoin that we have seen. <laughs> We've seen Titan uh, blow up in the past. All right, a lot of the algorithmic stablecoins that we've seen, you know, before have just just not worked, and they have blown up and ended poorly. And pretty much every time somebody launches a new algorithmic stablecoin, it's sort of like, hey. Didn't we learn this lesson before? But no, somebody always has a brilliant explanation as to why this time is different and why it's why it's gonna work out uh, or not have this type of problems that we saw yesterday. So what happened? Because you know this is a stable coin that went from a dollar, okay, down to like sixty something cents in like twenty four hours. So like basically lost close to forty percent of its value, um, and likely was a huge factor on why Bitcoin fell hard as it did yesterday. So let's just pull this up. So basically we said we define what UST is. Uh, it's, a, it's a stable coin that runs on Terra, okay? Um, but it's an algorithmic stable coin. So it, 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 yeah, what does that mean? So basically, how does any stable coin work? Well, basically a stable coin is the idea is you have a cryptocurrency that you can always redeem for certain value. So you could theoretically create a stable coin where you are basically like a bank where you just hold a bunch of, uh, you know, dollars or cash equivalents in your bank and say like, all right, if you want to buy stable coins, you come to me, the issuer, I've got this value, you know, you give me dollars or a dollar equivalent, and then I give you stable coins back. And the whole like contract here is that anytime you want to get out of your stable coins, give them and get your money back is you can always come to me, the issuer, 
and then get your, you know, dollar equivalents back, okay? So that's what a stable coin should do. So you can implement that by just having a bunch of cash in a bank account, or you can get more complicated than that. You have cash equivalents on your balance sheet, right? You can start to get a little sketchy. Uh, or you can do like things like algorithms, where you're algorithmically pinning, pegging the value of the stable coins so that you can always redeem uh, you know, tokens. So the algorithm works in really complex ways. So there's how how UST works is basically it works by, you know, uh burning the sister token, the Terra token. <laughs> okay, so we can look to see what happened uh with Terra yesterday. Okay, we can see that Terra was down 50% in 24 hours, 64% uh in a week. So par part of how it works is by burning Terra, and that's one of the reasons that we've seen you know, the Terra price, you know, it climbing over over time is because of the usage of that and the TUS UST ecosystem. So basically, if you've got four hundred dollars, four hundred five dollars, you burn one Luna, you should be able to mint four hundred five dollars UST stablecoin. Okay, so it, it's vice the same implies vice versa. A new Luna is minted by burning UST and the other algorithmic stablecoin that Terra supports. Okay, so. Um, the other thing about this is it has an arbitrage mechanism. So basically, you can exploit uh, deviating prices in each of the tokens. For example, if there's too much demand for UST, that may result in its price dropping $1. Uh, but that means traders can convert $1 worth of Luna into UST and pocket the difference as a profit. So this model is designed to help even out the supply and demand for UST. Okay, while well, the price of UST is too high, users are incentivized to burn Luna and create new UST and increase this stable coin supply while also decreasing the amount of Luna in circulation. So that's how it's supposed to work. And it also has Bitcoin the equation. And and it's it's supposed to work under normal market conditions. Okay. So basically the conditions that we've seen in crypto for the past, you know, year and a half plus, it's technically supposed to work. But the problem is when we see the insane volatility like we've seen recently and the price of crypto markets just get drug into this bear market that we're in, um it doesn't really work like it's supposed to. So basically, during periods of high volatility and one-sided buy-sell activity for UST, the above stabilizer may not be sufficient to maintain the peg in short term. So the peg is the price of the actual cryptocurrency relative to the US dollar. That's If it's on peg, it's maintaining this peg. One UST is always going to trade for one US dollar. But it, basically, because the market conditions were wrong or bad, then it started to lose its peg and the stablecoin value started dropping and dropping and dropping. And then consequently, any money that you had in a stablecoin was dropping, dropping, dropping. So um, basically, the, how has Bitcoin fit into the equation? So there's sort of a backup uh, here where Bitcoin also was functioning as the reserve cryptocurrency for the UST stablecoin. So basically, um, people were worried about you know, how is this going to work algorithmically with, you know, burning Terra and then minting UST and then vice versa? Well, the backup idea is that like, okay, we get it. We're going to create an additional reserve with Bitcoin. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that's going to be like our reserve currency for the ecosystem, kind of like how central banks heard, hold large quantities of dollars and their foreign exchange reserves. So, They've been buying insane amounts of Bitcoin, up to $10 billion of the Bitcoin, $1.5 billion last week, taking its total reserves to $3.5 billion. So, uh, however, on Monday, the organization said it's taking steps to proactively defend the stability of UST. So that included lending $750 million of the Bitcoin to trading firms to protect the UST peg and further $750 million in UST being lent out to buy more Bitcoin. <laughs> okay, so uh, basically that was, uh, let's just see here, that was one of the big things that basically caused a lot of sell pressure uh, to Bitcoin itself. So Bitcoin's already getting drugged down by the market in many ways, but now what's happening was you have all this sell pressure from UST basically dumping Bitcoin and trying to maintain the peg of UST. And uh, yeah, that's basically what happened. So you, you had a situation where uh, Terra stablecoin is melting down and then try to save Terra sell, you know, stablecoin melting down. You've got Bitcoin selling off harder and harder <laughs> during that time. As you can see, you know, basically Bitcoin is down Bitcoin's down more than some of these larger altcoins on the seven-day on seven-day trajectory. So 
minus 18% on seven days. Ether's down 16.6. Bitcoin's down harder than XRP. <laughs> seven days. Bitcoin's down harder than, uh, you know, Cardano and Dogecoin. <laughs> seven days. So that's the crazy crypto that absolutely blew up. Uh, we're going to see what happens with, you know, the UST. Uh, it, surprisingly, you know, we're, we're getting back close up to us you know back close to one dollar um you know i i in my opinion i mean it's sort of like a lot of confidence is gonna be shaken in this thing uh long term we'll see what happens you definitely have to exercise caution when you're using this type of stuff i'm not like i'm not uh sitting here trying to uh you know hope that anybody fails because that's of course gonna be bad for the space and bad for anybody who has money in this but we gotta we gotta take a step back and look at the hard truth of what's happened with these algorithmic stable coins and know the risks before we start trying to implement something like this. Um, so, anyways, let's that that's what's happening. You know, to UST, uh, of course, Terra is equally getting wrecked uh, throughout this entire process. I think not just part of it's because of how it functions in the UST ecosystem, but part of it's also just sentiment. I mean, you can see it just absolutely fall off a cliff right here. Okay, so, um, you know, in terms of the entire crypto market, again, having a major effect on Bitcoin, um, we can see what's happened. The overall crypto market has definitely been taking a, a significant downturn, all right, um, with the stock market and the entire crypto market getting drugged down. It's not just because of the stable coin blowing up. We've seen a pretty big meltdown across everything. <laughs> okay, stock market's down. Uh you know, we're, we're negative across most indices on the year time frame. All right. Uh, Crypto is in, in the same boat. All right. You basically are um, facing economic headwind and nobody is safe. It doesn't matter if it's stocks, crypto is not a crypto specific problem. Um, but the reason I bring up the USD thing is because of how hard it particularly hit the cryptos uh, involved in that process. Okay. So you can see like, you know, Bitcoin, like I said before, has hit harder than a lot of these other majors in the seven-day time frame. And I don't think Bitcoin would have probably got drugged down to the level it was yesterday if it hadn't been for the UST debacle. And I think also, you know, Terra getting hit particularly hard um, is a pretty good indicator of that as well. Okay, so basically this exacerbated, in my opinion, the uh, the, the drop in the Bitcoin price. So what's going to happen to the overall crypto markets? We've been talking about this, like we saw this happen yesterday. Again, um, you know, what's, it's really hard to call in the short term. Got a lot of really smart people who are looking at this, you know, who, who want to try to call bottoms, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's a dangerous uh, thing to try to do right now. I'm not going to try to call any bottoms uh, because frankly, we just don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you know, we're talking about economic headwind with inflation, with raising rates, uh, basically the fundamentally the environment that we've been a part of for this entire run through here, if that if if the ingredients of that environment are completely changing, we don't know what that means for the future of this market and how low it could go and what the future returns are going to look like. So you know, I'm not definitely don't give financial advice in the first place in this channel, but uh, I'm okay with saying, hey, be careful because you just you just don't know. Um, so I think we definitely need to get out of this slump before we can convincingly find a bottom and find you know future uh, in crypto but now i do want to say there's going to be a there's going to be a big opportunity on the table right um because at some point the market's going to look like like when you when you've got all this price history above your current level then that means like do you think that the stock market's never going to return to its all-time high like historically speaking like it's probably going to return to its all-time high yeah, same thing with major cryptos. And I mean stock market. I mean I mean, you know, major stock indices of like quality blue chip stocks that have been on for a long time. Okay, I'm not talking about just like random stocks that are that are uh could go away, because some of them could. Same thing with crypto. It's like, do you really think that crypto is never gonna return to its all-time high? Okay. Uh do you really think that Bitcoin's never gonna trade at sixty thousand dollars ever again? Well, if you do think it's going to, which I mean, I personally do, cannot find your advice, that's just my opinion, then at the current level, if you bought it, you're going to get a 2x return on your investment. Okay. Um, 
if you buy into, you know, the S&P, you're going to get like a, you know, like not, not even a 10% return. So, uh, maybe about a 10% return. So, you know, you're talking about a risk reward scenario that looks really favorable. Like we've got all this price history above where we currently are that at some point when it looks like a bottom has convincingly been formed, then there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of upside potential because you have history above the current price level. When you're here, the only thing you can really do is either make new highs or just fall. And the, the more likely scenario, if, if the run is exhausted, is that you're going to fall, okay? Um, in terms of a risk-reward scenario, and you've got a lot farther to fall than you did before. But right here, basically, you know, you've got an entire year, an entire year of price history above that level. With this, with this with basically, like a slight exception here. So at some point, once ever that bottom looks pretty convincing, like, there's going to be a lot of smart money, you know, gobbling that up. Um, that time could be now, don't know, could be in the future. I think it's one of the two. I think the crypto is definitely going to push back to its all-time high and go beyond. I just don't know when, the, don't know when that's going to happen. Um, don't pretend to. Anybody that pretends to, well, just watch and see if it comes true before you listen to them in the future. Almost everybody that I've listened to that's claimed to know what's going to happen in a short-term time frame, anything less than six months, has been just, like, dead wrong. So, yeah, it's including really smart people. But I don't think that crypto's going anywhere by any stretch of the imagination, especially for top-quality stuff. So let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. Did you watch the UST debacle? <laughs> were you Were you... Were you in the Terra ecosystem? Uh, you know, did you hold any UST? Again, you know, I really don't want... I, I'm sure there's many people watching this video who are affected by this, you know. Definitely don't want to make light of anybody's situation. But that's what happened. It was pretty insane to watch. It's one of the craziest things I've ever seen happen in the crypto space. I mean, I've seen, like, Titan Finance go down. I saw a lot of these algorithmic stablecoin projects completely fell. But this was on a, a different scale. <laughs> And it happened like during a pretty severe time uh, in the crypto markets, and it had an additional impact on the price of Bitcoin. So I said yes, no UST but whole Luna. Yeah, sorry about that. Do I have a recommendation for running Ethan on the cloud? Yeah, you can do that. You could do it on most hosting providers. Some might not let you do it, but. Uh, most places that we can run just like a basic Linux computer in the cloud, you could run a ETH node. Somebody says the whales smart money are buying, so keep watching the contrary investors and know what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I buy that. Um, I say I buy that. I, I That sounds plausible is what I mean. Um, it's just, uh, you know, Depends on, you know, if you buy now, I'll put it that way, uh, you have to be prepared to have more pain before you, you know, before you get that upside. Somebody said they shorted UST. Somebody says they think a fake out waiting on CPI tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see if CPI has any effect. I mean, one potential outcome of this is like, you know, with, with the entire markets, with everything, um, you know, we, we got we, the rate hikes that were mentioned last week within our expectations. Uh, of course, we saw like a slight rally in the stocks and Bitcoin whenever that happened. Um, but it's very possible that like the market just continues to drag and we have these bearish, you know, forces um, until we kind of get that that bottom that's kind of th what happens in bear markets is basically like good news <laughs> does it have any kind of like lasting effect it might have like a little blip uh short-term trading activity but like it's just you've got this headwind someone says they panic sold around this time last year Let's see here. At least I tried to keep it decentralized. How do you pick a decentralized 
T to centralize one like USD. So definitely DAI's done a pretty good job at this. Uh, check out DAI decentralized stablecoin. It started out with the single collateral DAI with just Ether, but now it's multi-collateral and holds lots of different um, lots of different cryptos that back up the back up the value. So it says they panicked old last year and it was the worst decision they ever made. Sometimes you gotta learn those lessons the hard way in crypto, you know. Definitely keeping the long-term time horizon is uh, historically proven to, you know, be the best strategy for, I think, most people. Again, not financial advice. We don't know what's going to happen with the crypto markets in the future. But, uh, you know, my long-term thesis is definitely that we're creating more and more technology that has real demand behind it, okay? And then as you generate more demand for that technology, insofar as crypto is, you know, integrated into that technology, that the, the cryptos that have some economics uh, that are inextricably linked to and integrated into that technology that more adoption means more demand means number go up uh now right now i mean we're in this slump right we're in this slump and no amount of economic headwind no amount of eth burning that's happening on the network is going to just rocket us off to all-time highs but like crypto is a pandora's box situation pandora's been out of the box there's no like stuffing it back into the box. And there's no reason to think that we could not get back to our same price levels that we had before with the current level of adoption. And adoption will increase. At least that's my bet. And we have lots of good reasons to think that. Somebody says, I have no money put into crypto. Should I take this time to learn blockchain development? No experience, but I want to change career, break my back every day in construction. So um, this is a perfect time to get your hands dirty with a new skill. Okay, definitely you want to learn the skill before you decide you're just like going to change careers. But, um, you know, just make sure that you like doing it. Um, but how you do that is by doing it. Like the whole litmus test for becoming a developer, in my opinion, is just, do you like doing it? Like there's a lot of people that get so caught up in their head of, am I smart enough to do this? Like, do I have what it takes? Uh, this, that, the other, right? The real, like, like, can, like, do you like doing it? That's the litmus test because at the end of the day, like, you know, building software is not easy, right? But it's rewarding. Okay. And if, if you like sitting down and solving problems and like, you know, sitting and concentrating and like making something happen, then like that is the process of software development. Do you like the process of software development well enough to where it's a better alternative than what you're currently doing? All right. That's the litmus test of whether you're probably going to make it as a developer. Now, I think I think I think the truth is most people could do it. Most people could code now compared to what opportunities right some people don't want to do it but that i mean most people watching this channel are going to be a lot closer to that because you're already interested in these topics anyway it tends to attract a certain type of person okay so how do you do that well basically you you just do the skills so anyways and then you know develop it from there so this is a perfect time to double down and learn. That's exactly what I did during the last bear market. Of course, I'd already been going down the crypto rabbit hole, but during the last, you know, insane, like, wintry crypto period of 2018, um, you know, that's after the, you know, the entire space just, like, <laughs> just just evaporated. But I knew that crypto was, was, like, I knew that the tech was here to stay because we saw all the stuff that we could do with it. And it was time to like, I saw it as a massive opportunity to like build hard when the space was quiet. And that's like when I started my YouTube channel was when the space was totally quiet. Like nobody cared. Like imagine making like all these YouTube videos when nobody cared about crypto. But then like when everybody showed up, that's when like my channel really exploded. And, uh, you know, a lot of stuff happened. And I, I was already had really amazing opportunities in crypto before that happened. That's the other, that's the other amazing thing is, even when the bear market hits, there's still a ton of talent, like ton of demand for tech talent because all the really smart players know that this space is not going away and that we have a ton of opportunity to build the next generation of blockchain applications and everybody needs blockchain developers to do that. And so that's, you know, that is the perfect time because 
I mean, there's already so much demand that, like, there's not enough developers to fill the supply. But that's even gonna, like, that opportunity is gonna get even better because there's a lot of people right now that just get into crypto because they're attracted by cryptocurrency prices and, like, less people are gonna be, less people are gonna get their attention caught that way. And so, like, like there's not a lot of competition for the developer jobs already, but now there's even less because people still want to hire developers and fewer people are going to get interested and become developers. So that, that's another just reason to really double down on skills right now. I always say that, you know, learning blockchain is one of the best ways to make life-changing money with crypto because, you know, to, or to make life-changing money with crypto investment, like you got to invest a lot or you got to buy when nobody else wants to buy or find a really early opportunity. And it's really hard to do all that type stuff. And it's a lot easier just to make a life-changing cash flow by learning a high-income skill. That's a pretty solid bet. Somebody says software developer demands are in demand as it is. Yes, totally. Software developers are already insanely in demand. Add on blockchain to that, which makes it even more in demand because it's such a niche skill. And then add fewer people caring about blockchain about getting into the industry which makes it even more demand you're adding all these multipliers on top of it so much as it's so hard to learn to be a web 3 dev that's exactly what i try to help you do on this channel Okay, so let's uh, let's do a couple more things here. Let's let's check the chain, see what's trending right now. I see you learn heaps in the videos. Thank you. Awesome. This is they're trying to can't pay the card. So you have, if you have if you need to pay with crypto, uh, reach out to Gregory at .com and get that taken care of. This is addicted to playing with React JS and blockchain, adding contract events and morale server, build DB, DAP, and morale. Awesome, very cool. Three JS metaverse blockchain, a good portfolio. Yeah, definitely. This is they watch the videos on the fifty plus tools. Awesome. Let's see here. There's a new contract that I'm looking at. I'm trying to figure out what it is here. How do I share my journey becoming a blockchain developer? Um, definitely go to my YouTube homepage. You can find that video there. It's pinned. Um, it's how to become a blockchain developer in 2022. It's definitely going to help you. I'm 
<laughs> okay. All right. So let's let's check the uh, let's check the chain right now. Let's see what's trending. So basically, um, we're looking at all the contracts that are currently trending in the past hour that have significant financial inflows. So a lot of NFT projects happening right now. So basically, I, this is my daily routine. I check to see what's you know actually on chain, what people are actually spending money on to try to discover new projects. I'm going to look at a couple projects here. There's not advice to say get into these projects. This is just my discovery process, uh, primary research tool for doing this. You can check it out in the link down in the description below. So let's just see here. We've got, uh, we definitely got the uh, Skyverse NFT project, that's one we've been watching this week. So we got, this is definitely continuing to get quite a bit of uh, steam here. But I see another one. This is the, uh, uh, the, the, I want to say, I don't, I'm trying to figure out what this is. The It's called Babby. I thought it was Baby, but it's Babby. And it looks like it's like a dancing baby. <laughs> uh, Let's just check them. Make sure it's the right one. Have you all saw the dancing baby? Uh, let's just see here. Make sure it's the right one. You see some of the craziest things happen. <laughs> yeah, but it's the same one. <laughs> so this is uh, 3D sculptures from virtual space. So it is the exact same one. Let's pull the website here. This reminds me of the dancing baby screensavers. <laughs> I'm kind of scared to see what happens. So maybe I should let it load off screen. So it looks like it's like a metaverse game. Let's just see here. You click to play. So you can actually like move around inside of it. <laughs> I'm too, I'm like too scared to go. <laughs> you won't regret this. I'm too scared to go inside like live on camera because I'm, I'm literally just checking this for the first time. I don't know what's inside that dungeon. So if you want to find out what's inside that dungeon, uh, you can check out the link down in the description below. You can find that trending project. Uh, it, But it looks like the dancing baby screensaver. I don't know if y'all ever saw that. Like old school. Uh, It's like the dancing babies with like these like zombie skins. It's totally nostalgic. Like you got an America Online t-shirt. This like 90s like jumpsuit top. A <laughs> Coca-Cola and an eye patch. It's awesome. But yeah, that thing's that thing is definitely trending right now. We've got uh 600. Let's see here. That one's got yeah, over 200K in the last day. We got 30 depositors from the Rich List segment. Awesome. Somebody says backed by a free download of a banking Trojan. <laughs> Can't tell me some very cheap courses for learning blockchain. I mean, go to my YouTube homepage. There's there's all kinds of free courses there. So, anyways, yeah, you know, definitely go to my YouTube homepage. Uh, check out those free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. We got a lot of new ones on there. Uh, take any one that, that looks interesting to you, get started. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or, you know, Hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely. I can become a blockchain master step by step start to finish over at dapuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. You know, I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. Okay. So hang in there, everybody. I know it's a crazy time in crypto right now. I'm feeling the pain just as much as everybody else. Um, you know, I do think the crypto can get back to its all-time high and make new all-time highs. I don't exactly know when that's going to be. I don't try to pretend to know where the bottom is. Uh, there's a lot of people that are going to try to do that and be dead wrong. There's a lot of people who have, you know, completely missed the previous tops and said that they were a lot higher in a short time frame. They've been completely wrong. Um, you know, my plan is to, you know, stay the course and, uh, 
be patient. And if history is any indication of what's going to happen in the future, then I expect to be rewarded for that patience. So as always, smash that like button down below. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. There will helps of videos out so more people can learn about blockchain. And uh, yeah, that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.